I would like to extend my gratitude for the opportunity to present here today to the organizers of the fifth international conference on tourism and leisure studies in Dubrovnik, Croatia. My name is Pat Mahoney. I'm a PhD in the Department of Sociology at Colorado State University in the United States. The title of my talk today is Behold the Horrors of a Man, Dark Tourism in the Anthropocene. In the past 30 years, there's been a rapid expansion in the global tourist industry. Today, almost 1.5 billion people travel annually, a number that projected to reach 2 billion by the year 2030. Tourism accounts for 10% of the global GDP, employs 10% of the global workforce, and has been growing at about an annual rate of 4%, outstripping G global GDP itself. Simultaneous to this growth in tourism, there has been a profound change in the Earth's climate, referred to as global warming, climate change, or the great acceleration. Human-induced effects on the planet have become so pronounced that a new geological epoch has been coined known as the Anthropocene. This paper brings together the growth in world tourism and the anthropogenic changes in the climate under the rubric of dark tourism. Specifically, I'll explore the shifting tourism patterns related to the opening up of the Antarctic region to cruise ship activity. My theoretical argument brings together two conceptual ideas, dark tourism and the Anthropocene. Briefly, I argue that dark tourism needs to be reconceived from its original human to human mistreatment to think in terms of human to nature atrocities. Similarly, the Anthropocene originally framed as a geophysical phenomena now needs to be understood as a social imaginary. Dark tourism, coined by Lenin and Foley in 2000, theorized that a new type of tourism was emerging, one associated with sites of death, disaster, and depravity. Also known as thanatourism, dark tourism posits a motivation or desire for actual or symbolic encounters with particularly violent forms of death. Some notable examples involve visiting the many Holocaust sites in Europe, such as Treblinka in Poland, or the Holocaust Museum in Berlin, or taking a pilgrimage to the 9-11 Memorial in New York City. Less notable examples include the Torture Museum in Rottenburg, Germany, the Museum of Barbarism in Turkey, the Genocide Museum, in and the demilitarized zone bordering North and South Korea. The Anthropocene was coined in 2000 by geologist Paul Crutzen and biologist Eugene Stormer to indicate a distinct ge geographical shift in the Earth's geological shift in the Earth's strat stratography that denotes a physical marker uh, of the impact humans have had on the planet. At its core, the Anthropocene is a new geological epoch, one in which human activity has become a planetary force. As an epochal change, the Anthropocene is punctuated by growing geophysical and climatological instability and breaks with the relatively stable Holocene period of the past 12 to 16,000 years. This paper argues that today the Holocene uh, signifies something more than its geological foundations. The Anthropocene has become a social imaginary, a discursive and symbolic epistemological regime. This lens of meaning operates as a challenge to how we as a species should be in the world, a world now damaged by the very presence of humanity itself. As an imaginary, the Anthropocene calls into question the tourist industry. Going, gone is the myth of gaining access to the pristine nature that has driven nature-based ecotourism for the last 10 to 12, 15 to 20 years. Now confronted by an anthropocentric world, the tour industry must reinvent its practices and its place on the planet. As an imaginary, the Anthropocene creates new frontiers where historically tourism has been one of the earliest industries to occupy these spaces. It is here that dark tourism becomes part of the anthropocentric story. Dark tourism, as it was originally conceived by Lennon and Foley, assumes human to human mistreatment. This paper broadens this meaning to include human to nature atrocities. In effect, dark tourism shifts from a human centric orientation to, to interrogating the relationship between humans and nature. 
In this sense, dark tourism in the Anthropocene involves the sale of an exp experience of nature's imminent uh, disappearance, where the tourist is confronted with the end of nature itself. Let me tell you a brief story or provide a parable that ties together this theoretical formation. In 1904, Norwegian explorer Carl Anton Larsen, for whom the Larsen ice shelf denoted there in the pink circle is named for, established a whaling station in South Georgia Island. After 60 years of operation, Larsen's whaling station is documented to have processed more than 60, excuse me, 53,000 whales. Now, as seen in the picture on the right, this little shop of whores is a major tourist attraction on South Georgia Island, in effect shifting our understanding of dark tourism from human to human to human to nature atrocities. Antarctica as a continent is essentially comprised of three regions, the Antarctic Peninsula, which I just mentioned, West Antarctica and East Antarctica. While Antarctic folklore dates back to ancient Greece, the continent was first sighted in 1820 and explored in 1895. Known as the Great White Continent, Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. At roughly twice the size of Australia, Antarctic, the Antarctic ice sheets contain about 70% of the world's fresh water. In fact, if all Antarctica's ice melted, the planet's oceans would rise by 63 meters or about 207 feet. Currently, Antarctica is governed by the Antarctic Treaty System, which prohibits military and mining activity and promotes scientific research and ecological conservation. The Cruise Market Watch is an organization that has monitored the activity of the cruise ship industry for many years. Here, they're noting from 20, 1990 to 2020, the cruise ship industry has grown at an astonishing 638% or a 21% increase on an annual basis, going from a mere 3.7 passengers across the globe in 1990 to almost 30 million a mere three decades later. This rapid increase in the global to, uh, cruise ship industry is documented by the IAATO, the International Association of Antarctic Tour Operation, Operators, which, in, which measures the uh, number of individuals who uh, travel to and set foot on the continent on an annual basis. As you can see here, the Arctic Peninsula, which is what the first five um, locations, uh, where the first five locations are located, have seen dramatic increases in their number of tourists from 1996 to 2018, ranging anywhere from the low 200% increase all the way well above 600% increase. The increase of 658% for all tour tourist activity on the continent uh, represents an increase of 30% on an annual basis. According to the IA, ATO. Since 2011, the number of shipborne landings has increased 157% due to favorable ice conditions. This has allowed for the proliferation of small boat cruising and kayaking and has given and Arctic tourist activities the look and feel of more temperate region regions such as the Gulf of um, Alaska. It's not just the number of uh, tourists to Antarctica that has dramatically increased, but the type of travel that has been profound as it relates to climate change. This is, look, this is looking at the CO2 emissions per tourist day by mode of transportation. Although the cruise uh, ship industry represents only 4% of the global tourist industry, Travel by water is the most energy intensive form of tourism. Cruise ships emit three to four times more CO2 than air travel per passenger. The 620 kilograms a day uh, produced by the Netherlands cruise to Antarctica is 12 times higher than the US 
and 37 times higher than the global per capita CO2 outputs. In fact, that 15 day excursion to Antarctica produced produces 60, uh, 60 or excuse me, 93,000 kilograms or 10 tons of CO2. Another thing I did for this research is I um, did a content analysis of a series of uh, Antarctic travel bro brochures. And here are some notable excerpts um, that are associated with the theme of dark tourism in the Anthropocene. It remains one of the world's most coveted travel goals. Access is the new luxury. The great white continent is largely unchanged since the early explorers. Total immersion in the planet's last most pristine wilderness. It would be a shame to postpone one of the world's greatest wildlife experiences until it's too late. In these brochures, we see the themes of loss and desperation coupled with statements of privilege and opportunity indicative of dark tourism in the anthropogenic age. So the great paradox of dark tourism in the Anthropocene has the tourists rushing off to see the world's wonders before they disappear. It is in this very act that they hasten the disappearance of nature itself. As agencies such as the UNWTO and the IATO, IAATO work to lessen the impact of tourism on climate change, special attention needs to be paid to the planet's vulnerable and special places. Thank you very much.